What's up guys, Joe Parfanuk here and welcome to my YouTube channel. So today's video is going to be a live sourcing tutorial. I'm going to use the Keepa product finder to find a bunch of profitable inventory. The Keepa product finder is such a valuable tool if you know how to use it. And this is because it allows you to sift through leads and you can basically filter out the bad ones and then leave you with the good ones. With online arbitrage, speed is the name of the game. So it really helps to use the product finder to speed things up instead of the traditional way of storefront stalking where you're going through a seller's products one by one. With that being said, let's get into the live sourcing tutorial so you can see exactly how you can find profitable products for your Amazon business. And if you got value, Please drop a like, comment, and subscribe. So let's get into it. What's up, guys? Welcome to the tutorial portion of the video. So this is exactly how I would live source if I'm working completely from scratch. Let's say you're a beginner and you have no storefronts, you have no products to research from. You could steal this product quite literally, and you can start to reverse source the sellers from this product. So one thing you're going to want to know is like what is hot in the online arbitrage space when you are sourcing. What are the buzzwords that you're hearing? Stanley cups are a perfect example of buzzwords that you're hearing. And I'm not saying to source Stanley cups where, while you can find them, them profitably, they were more so better last year, but there are still people sourcing them profitably. So this is a great place to start. Great value is usually what you'll hear, but I don't think that's really that good. Uh, great value is Walmart's private label brand, but let's type in Stanley on Google. And let's type in an Amazon listing. So we're going to look up an Amazon listing. So we're going to go to Stanley Cups here. Now we can try to find ones that have extra or have a decent amount of third-party sellers. So basically, when you download this software called DSV QuickView, which is a free software that you can download. So you can get that from Google Chrome, DSV, v, DS QuickView. This will show you how many FBA sellers are on the listing when you're sourcing. So we can basically go to one of these listings here. So this one is $71.99. Amazon is not in stock. And there are seven plus FBA sellers. So this is a good one to start with. And you could take this ASIN word for word if you want. And you can start to reverse source from this on your own. So with SellerAmp, we'll have the ASIN right here. So we're going to go and so it's selling for $70. You might be able to get this for 40. Honestly, this honestly might be a profitable lead. I don't want to tank a Stanley cup, but, um, so what we're going to do though, is we're going to reverse source the sellers that are on this listing. So we see, this is a great keep up, very stable, uh, tanked a little bit over here, but for the most part, it's pretty stable. This is something I definitely would purchase if found profitably. So, you're going to go to the new and used sellers here. We're mainly going to focus on the new ones, obviously, and the prime sellers if you're doing FBA. So we're seeing some good sellers here. We we want to stay between 20 and 200. So we're going to want to pick one of the sellers in these ranges. So the reason why we're trying to stay under around 200 is because most of the arbitrage sellers are under 200 because they just started their store in the last few years. It takes a long time to build up reviews. I don't even have above 200 yet. So that really goes to show. But right here we have 46 ratings. We have 64 ratings. You can also do under, you know, you can do under um, 20 if you wanted to. But for the purpose of this video, I would like to stay with people who have a bunch of products that I can reverse source from. If you're a beginner starting out and it's your first time sourcing, it's okay to source someone with like eight, 10 reviews, you know, just to get a feel for it. But as you start to scale, you're going to want to source the bigger stores. So right here we have three, or if we have four that meet our criteria, we have these sellers right here. I'm going to take two. I'm going to take the first two we found and I'm going to pull their seller ID. So this is basically the unique ID that identifies every single seller on Amazon. And it's right here. So you can pull that and you can put it into the product finder. So this is the Keepa product finder. This is a software you already should have. It is the Bible to selling on Amazon, but most people don't know how to use this particular tool. So the product finder basically can give you a set of ASINs based on your filter and you can input seller IDs. So 
there's other ways and other videos I have on my YouTube channel that you could check out on like where you don't have to plug the seller ID, but this, for the purpose of this video, we're just going to reverse source these two sellers that we just found. So here's their seller. Here's where you input their seller IDs. So right here where it says sellers, so you're going to want to scroll all the way down, refine your search even more, go to the seller section and you got one seller here. So that's one of their seller IDs that we just copied from the search. And when you find a good seller, you also want to copy and paste this into a Google sheet, or even you could bookmark it on your browser as well. But I would recommend just putting it in a Google sheet. So you have it in one spot you could put it where you put your buy sheet or your product sheet, whatever you, you want to do. But I think that's the best way to do it. So we're going to take the other seller's IDs here. And we're going to copy and paste in the same spot. You have to separate it by a comma to make sure you know that there's multiple sellers. So we have 323 products, but this is going to take us a little bit long to go through. So we're going to want to narrow it down here. So the first filter I would use is the 100K sale, 100K rank. So essentially this keeps the products under 100K. So it depends on the category, you know, beauty, I want to stay under 100K. Video games are a more smaller category. So I want to stay under 20K there. So you just kind of have to get familiar with each of the category ranks. And SellerRamp will help you by giving you a sales estimate. But your own data is always going to be the best. So the next one we're going to do is Amazon out of stock. You, if As you get more experienced, you definitely can compete with Amazon when they're in stock. You just want to check the buy box statistics, of course, because... You want to know how much Amazon is in stock for, but this video, since we're gearing towards mostly beginners, we're going to want to do, we're going to want to make sure that they're out of stock. So we won't have to deal with them on any listings. So the next thing, this is the 90 day drop. So this allows you to get more stable keepers if you know how to do this right. So what I'll typically tell people to do is 10 to 20%. And I'll explain this right now. So this means that the buy box price here will not drop by more than 10%. So this is basically limiting the amount of tanking tanked listings we'll see. And also this is the other end is not, so it's relatively stable keepers because this other side is 20%. So this means that the product will not increase by more than 20% in price over 90 days. So you're relatively seeing more of a stable keeper, basically like this one, this would meet the criteria of what we're looking for as far as the 10 to 20% because the, the price is not bouncing up too much in the last 90 days, staying relatively stable. So that's that. And that's the, ne that's the next filter. And now we have 86 products where we had 320 before. So the last filter we're going to do is the amount of sellers on the listing. And you can get even more granular. If you start to add more sellers, you could sort it by a category. So you can do beauty category while we have 33 here. You can do health and household. You only have two products there. So you can definitely sort it by root categories if you want. Uh, but for this video, we'll go broad because we only have 86, which is not too bad. So the last thing we're going to do is the amount of sellers. So let's say we're looking for listings that have more than usually say like six to eight sellers. Since we have a decent amount of products, we'll do eight to let's say 70 sellers. I've seen, you know, 60, 70 sellers on a listing and it will still sell pretty well. Uh, as long as the, the product sells, you know, 1,000, 2,000 times a month, you want to make sure there's volume on those listings if you see 60, 70 sellers there. Because if it's 70 sellers and it only sells 300 times a month, that might start to tank because there's not enough really sales to go around at that point. So we have 69 products. We're going to load the search. So right here we have Kachava, which... I know has dropped in price as of recently. I know I saw it in a telegram group and you want to stay away from those. Um, they were selling it for like 40 bucks and that just goes to show what happens when you buy from telegram groups. So the price is absolutely getting destroyed. I won't be surprised if Kachava comes in here and tries to like kick off these sellers for basically taking their price almost below retail at this point. So yeah, that's, that's something I would stay away from. Um, but we got some other listings here. So this looks pretty stable. We could try to find this profitable profitably. 
This also potentially could be wholesale, but honestly, I'm not exactly sure because there is a decent amount of sellers. Sometimes you will see wholesale listings with 30 sellers on here, but let's see if you can get it for arbitrage. Yeah, no, at the prices we're seeing here, this is definitely more so on the wholesale side of things because this is $25. Yeah, my guess is this is more so on the wholesale side of things because it is also under $12. So we might have had some wholesale in there mixed in with the Stanley Cups, which is definitely normal because people will do arbitrage and wholesale at the same time. So this, well, now I zoom out, this could be OA just because we're seeing 40 sellers at certain points. So this might be more so of a small and light thing though, which is no longer actually around anymore. Um, but we could take a look and see this is also more on the heavy side of things. You want to make sure you factor in the weight costs and you can do that within sell ramp. So yeah, this is definitely wholesale because I don't even see it coming up. Um, it says $8.99 at this Asian food store, which this is a two pack here. So yeah, this is probably not going to work. I already assumed that it was wholesale anyway. Um, so we have this hot pro to hot tool pro. This also could have ended up in a telegram group. Honestly, I've seen some similar hot to hot tool products in one of those. Just when I went to ASD did find, or which is a wholesale convention. I did find someone who was doing telegram. I luckily did not buy from any of them though. I would stay away. Um, but I'm guessing that this is definitely came up in a telegram or something or a wholesaler. That price dropped pretty significantly. Yeah, it's $90. It's definitely probably more of a liquidation price here. Not sure if you can get Calvin Klein wholesale. It seems like they file IP complaints. So if you're new, you're going to want to get the IP alert software. That will help you see if there is any IP complaints popping up on a listing. And you can see right here, Calvin Klein files IP complaints. It does look like they are selling this product for 16 So they don't have the size currently. So five pack it's saying actually, well, it's saying a four pack here, but a five pack looks like a four pack just off the photo. So I would go with the four pack. So this is, I think a three plus one. I don't know. This is only a three pack. So this is a four pack and it's 2199. I know if you sign up for SACS, off fifth, you might get 10% off, I believe, for first purchases. It's another way you can try to create a little margin here. Let's see if there's any coupon codes that pop up. It's like ship, just a free ship coupon. So this is Capital One Shopping, and here's Retail Me Not, which is, these are two basically coupon cashback Chrome extensions you can use. 10% off. Yeah, most, most you're going to get 10% off, which... Probably won't move the needle enough. That'll probably get you down to like 20. And with apparel, you're going to want to take a little bit of a bigger margin. I also have prep fees factored in here. So that's why I'm going to subtract, make this clear. Um, I have $1.85 prep and software fees added into the cost already. So if I subtract that, it's going to show up and say it's 5%, which is not enough. Because for most of you watching this video, you probably don't have a prep center yet. So... Yeah, that's definitely not going to work. We need more than that on apparel. So this is 
68, size 12. See if Nike's running any kind of sale or anything like that. Looking for the Revolution 5. This is a Revolution 6. It's like we see it at Nike. It's no longer available. It does look like my virtual assistants may have found this lead because it was $36 when we last checked it. And with Selleramp, you can basically go down here and you'll see when they last found it. Uh, and it looks like they found it last year for $36, actually. Never mind. But who knows? This could come back on sale at $36 again. So definitely something to keep an eye out for. This could be arbitrage, also could be wholesale. Let's see if, if Laura Mercier is running any kind of sale. That's probably where you would buy this. There's They do definitely do sell it on some other websites. Feel Unique, I see here. Forty three. If they ran like a decent sized sale, let's say 40, 50% off or something, that could end up being profitable. Or it could just be wholesale. So... Yeah, basically, that's what I wanted to show you guys. I know we kind of struck out sometimes. Just goes to show that it's not always going to be sunshine and rainbows. There's going to be times where you're sitting and you won't find anything for an hour. I've definitely had that even, even still to this day. I'll still have something where I find maybe one thing in an hour max at certain times. It can be really bad sometimes, you know, but... You just got to keep going and there are days where you're going to find like five and two hours. So, you know, th that's, that's really the game It's ebbs and flows and the more you source, the better you'll get. But I hope just me showing you how I source and how I look for profitable stuff will help you do it on your own. So yeah, watch this video back, you know, definitely take it all in and you'll be able to be well on your way to find some profitable products for your Amazon business. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and as always if you got value please drop a like comment and subscribe and thank you guys for watching